Hey everybody, Adjective Gaming here. So I wrote a simple Python script that scans a list of 45,000 video games, and it chooses a game for me to play at random. This is Roulette's Play. I really have to do something about my intro. Looks like I made it in 2003 PowerPoint. Okay, let's see what we got. The Bridge. Wait, didn't I play this game in episode 10? Interesting. I generated a game called Bridge Crosser, which... Well, never mind, that's Bridge Crosser. All right, so the bridge is made by quantum astrophysicist. I seriously hope quantum physicists didn't sit down to make this in the game. Oh, I'm sorry, is your career of delving into the infinite and unlocking the mysteries of the universe not interesting enough for you? But I think they're just game creators. I, I think they have no diplomas. The Bridge is an indie game for Windows, Linux, Mac, and Amazon Fire TV. Alright. In the game, the player controls an Escher-like character. What's an Escher, you may ask? I have no fucking clue. Moritz Cornelius Escher was a Dutch graphic artist who mathematically inspired woodcuts, lithographs, and mezzotints. mezzotints? There's just way too many made-up words at this point. I'm just gonna play the game. I don't know why I do these stupid intros. Alright, first off, I'm deducting a point for being entirely in black and white. That's just lazy art design. Uh, first impressions. It's exactly like Sonic the Hedgehog. I keep waiting for Knuckles to show up. So this game starts off with your protagonist sleeping under a tree. But I don't know if it's poor game design or what, but after you wake up, you have the option of going left or right. Now if you go left, you circle the entire planet, but then if you go right, it starts the game. The main goal of each level is to enter each door and it's usually locked. Now much like the rest of the universe, this game is centered around gravity. But seriously, this game is weird and it really feels like I should be using a gyroscope. You know, like in your phones, you dumb kids. Instead of using the arrow keys. There's a rewind mechanic, much like Braid. It'd be absolute bullshit to play this game without this. The main obstacle is the menace. It's this giant boulder. What I don't understand is that you can drop about 75 feet and not break every bone in your body. But the minute you touch this boulder, you just disintegrate. Probably shouldn't question this since I'm walking on the ceiling. Difficulty progression was pretty nice. I, I didn't really get stuck anywhere. I think one of the earlier puzzles, it took me about 15 minutes. And I wanted, I wanted to look it up. I wanted to find a video on YouTube and see what the solution was. But that's against rule number three of Roulette's Play. Roulette's Play, rule number three. No guides, no walkthroughs, no playthroughs. I finally found someone who shares my passion for esoteric mathematics. Said no one ever. The bridge slowly introduces new mechanics into its game. After completing the first chapter, you're introduced to these vortices that sucks anything around it in. Then the next thing introduces the inversion doors, and it puts you on the opposite side of the Escher walkway, and, and it makes the main character colorless. And to complete the level, have to be white. There's gotta be a political joke somewhere in there. Just when you think this game is over, Introducing shit, it introduces something called the Veil. I don't know how to describe it. My mind has already gone the fuck trying to get here. Hey, let me, let me think. You independently control the gravity for the black and white things that look like they were drawn on a TI-83 calculator when you enter this Veil. Also, the Veil is a whorehouse curtain. I mean, things are super confusing when you're trying to track the inversion and the Veil things. So here's the final level of this game. It caught me off guard. I thought it was going to be harder in the end. But that's it. And in the end, after you complete the level, you find out that the bridge he was looking for was under his house the whole time. The bridge that connects dimensions or something. I couldn't really follow the uh, pretentious the pretentious story that was happening. But after you cross the bridge, you get hit by a column, and it returns you to the apple tree you were originally sleeping under, but this time it's in color. Yay. There we go, the bridge. Uh, after completing it, you have access to uh, mirror mode. Every level is slightly more inconvenient. Uh, no thank you. The bridge. It took me two hours to complete. Start to finish. Story-wise, I had no idea what was going on. Gameplay-wise, I had also had no idea what was going on. I think I have vertigo now from all the camera rotating. It was an enjoyable game. I'm gonna give it three gravities out of five. Also, come on, Septentrion, the 1994 game for the NES, did it first. Nobody likes a copycat. Get your shit together. Astrophysicist games.